just seen Donkey Kong. I was crazy in love with Donkey. It was the most brilliant arcade game of the era. Um, it was it was developed by a gentleman, Mr. Miyamoto, in Japan, who was a Nintendo employee. So everyone always says to me, "Oh, you did Donkey Kong." Well, I didn't create Donkey Kong. I didn't create Mario. I didn't come up with the idea. I took his arcade game and I put it on the Atari. So I negotiated a contract with this company and uh, Coleco had the rights, which they had spent $25 million with um, Nintendo to acquire all the rights. Because at that point, Nintendo didn't have a game machine out in the US. And once again, this is another one of these crazy projects. A Donkey Kong machine at that point probably had $3,000 of cost in it. I mean, when you're building a coin-op machine, if you need more RAM, you put it in. If you need another microprocessor, you put it in. There's no limit to what you could spend because the machines cost a fortune. So I had to take that game and put it into a 4,000-byte program. And I was stupid enough to say yes. I can do that. I got an Atari machine, I, I, I got a Nintendo arcade machine of the game, had it sitting next to me. I couldn't use the code, I couldn't use the graphics, none of that would be in the right, right um, format to be used on an Atari. And I played the game like crazy, obviously, and the game had four levels. The famous level is the level with ramps. The ramps are slanted, ball rolls down, the ball, the um, barrels roll down, and Mario, that's the first time Mario's ever in a game, by the way. He's the guy in Donkey Kong. Mario runs, jumps over the barrels, climbs the ladders, goes up. Well, there's a little problem with the Atari 2600. And the problem with the Atari is, on a game system, you have two kinds of graphics. You have what's called background graphics, which are the scene in the background. And you have the foreground graphics, which are the sprites. Those are the things that can move around. So the way you do a game is you define a background, and then you put sprites on top of it, and they move around problem was that the Atari had so little RAM and so little capability to display on the screen that they didn't put enough information, enough memory in it to hold a full background of information. It only had enough memory in it to hold half of a background of information. So it could, you could define whatever you wanted in big blocks for the left side of the screen. And on the right side of the screen, you could flip a switch and say, either show me the same thing on the right side of the screen, or show me a reflected version of what's on the right side of the screen. That's it. There's no, you put everything all over the screen. So if you think about the way ramps work, well, you can't reflect to get the ramps. You can't copy to get the ramps. You can't do the ramps. So when I did the game, I started working on it, and the ramps were flat. So it was flat ramp, flat ramp, flat ramp, and the barrel fell and went down like this. And it was fine. It was the sacrifice I had to make because the machine couldn't do unique information on one side than the other. So this was all going great, and I was probably halfway done with the game when I started thinking about what my next project was going to be. And those guys on the West Coast, Activision, had just been doing amazing quality games. I was buying them, they were unbelievable. So I said, I should call them, maybe I'd do some work for them. So I called Activation, I called the main, not, main line, and I said, can I speak to the head of development? And I bounced around for a while, and eventually a guy got on the phone, and I said, I make, I design Atari games. And he said, no you don't. I said, no, 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 really I do. I design Atari games. Now I'm in New Jersey. And he says, well, what have you done? And I said, well, right now I'm programming the Atari version of Donkey Kong. And he said, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> so he flew in, and don't tell Coleco this. Coleco, if you're watching, I didn't violate any confidentiality. I showed him my Donkey Kong, because he came, and he came into my basement of my house and, where I was working, and I showed him Donkey Kong, and he was very impressed. And as he was leaving, the last thing he said is he turned around and he said, by the way, if you were working for Activision those ramps would be slanted. And he left. It was like a challenge. So I went in and I rewrote the code and I figured out a way to make the ramp slanted. I figured out a way to display new information on the right side and the left side. It's a crazy thing to do, but I did it. And the final game had ramps slanted and it was all due to the vice president of Activision challenging me to do it. So he helped Coleco put out a better product in the end. 
So the other problem with Donkey Kong was it had four levels. It had the ramps, it had the elevators, it had what's called the rivets, and then it had a more complex elevator level. And I could never fit four levels in 4,000 bytes. So I got the ramp level in, I got the rivet level in, and then I went to Coleco and I said, okay, uh, on the 2600, you can have 2K, 2,000, 4,000, or 8,000 bytes. I need to go to 8,000 bytes. And they said, no. And I said, I can't do the other two levels. And they said, we don't care. We're going to sell as many of these as we can make. doesn't matter. No elevators, doesn't matter. And I said, it's the integrity of the game. I, I need the other two levels. And they said, no. And I had no time anyway. I mean, they were trying to make Christmas. and So... The game went out with two levels. And I think I pretty, did a pretty damn good job on the game. I think it looks very much like the arcade game. I think those two levels play great, but I was doomed for the rest of my life. Every time I'm at any conference, <clears throat> the first question anyone asks is, why didn't you put the other two levels in Donkey Kong? So we're getting this on film now so people understand. Number one, I could have, but I didn't because I didn't have the memory and I didn't have the time. And to, to give you an example of the time, at near the end of the deadline, it had to be done by May 30th, I think, it's in time for manufacturing, to get into the stores by um, Thanksgiving, they asked me to come up to Coleco from New Jersey, come up to Coleco in Hartford, Connecticut, and work up there. So I wanted to make sure I'd get it done. So I remember the last three days I was working on it, I never left the cubicle, and I had the Greenberg brothers, who were the owners of Coleco, coming by the cubicle every hour asking how it was going. And I didn't get out of that chair for three days. And when I finished it, I handed it to them. My wife flew up from New Jersey to meet me, to spend the weekend in Connecticut. She got off the plane. I went over to pick her up, and she said, Oh, my God, what happened to you? Because I was pale like a ghost. I hadn't shaved in a week. I looked like I, looked like I was dead. So that game almost killed me. But that game did very well, and it was a really fun project. Awesome. <laughs>